Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I get to give you a preview of a new product. I love that. Uh, Harry over at Zaktech in Sweden sent me a pre-production unit of his new Whisper desktop receiver, WSPR, Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. This is a purpose-built receiver. This is not an SDR. This is an analog receiver that's microprocessor controlled. But it is purpose-built specifically for receiving WSPR in the HF spectrum. It has a frequency range of 100 kilohertz to 28.2 megahertz. Upper sideband with a bandpass filter of 400 hertz that's centered around 1.5 kilohertz, which is where the whisper signals uh, are. If you uh, tune to one of the whisper frequencies and you look at the audio passband up at around 1.5 kilohertz is where you'll see all the whisper signals sitting. So this is a analog receiver, nice little case, SMA antenna connector on one end, audio out, and USB. And the USB provides power, it only draws 100 milliamps, and also provides a serial port for cat control. You can set up a WS JTX uh, as if this was an ICOM 741 or 751. Uh, and then WSJTX can control this to set frequency so it can band hop and it can monitor whisper broadcasts on um, 630 meters up to 10 meters. Uh, so, yeah, if what, what would you use this for? Well, let's say you wanted to set up a whisper monitoring station uh, that you were going to provide data to the network and have it band hop and, and just sit there 24 7 monitoring uh, whisper. Uh, you wouldn't want to tie up one of your radios 24-7, probably, like my ICOM 705. I wouldn't want to have that tied up 24-7, just receiving whisper. Uh, so this is a relatively low-cost solution. Um, it's a, he said he's going to target about $79 US for it. Uh, so yeah, you could set this up with a, an old laptop, or, or as I'm going to do, a Raspberry Pi, and just have it sitting there 24-7 monitoring whisper. So... Let's go hook this up and let's see how it performs. Here's a little whisper receiver close up so you can get a better look at it. As you can see, it's about four inches long or about 10 centimeters. So not very big, nice little box. It's a extruded aluminum container, antenna input, SMA connector on this side, micro USB and audio out. I wonder why he didn't go USB-C. I might ask him about that. I think we're far enough along that USB-C might be the way to go. But micro USB is fine. It'll work. And this is a slot for an LED indicator. <clears throat> There's the label. Multiband Whisper HF receiver. This product number, 1055. 100 kilohertz to 28 megahertz. Well, 28.2. And that is the website page for it. Uh, https colon slash slash www.zactech.com slash 1055. So that's the little box. What you need to hook it up to a computer is uh, you'll need a <clears throat> eighth inch audio cable to go from the audio out to the microphone input on your computer or <clears throat> One of these little cheap six, seven dollar USB audio interfaces. Just plug that into the microphone input into another USB port and you're good to go. Uh, USB, micro USB cord. We'll go to a USB port on the computer that will power it and provide cat control. So I'm gonna hook it up to my laptop. Let's go to the laptop and we'll go through the software configuration. Okay, I have plugged the little box into my computer and the audio interface, and I'm going to launch WSJTX. And we're going to configure it. Oh, I'm probably going to have to... Yeah. I guess we've got to do this. DM. 25XE. We'd have to put it in our grid. 
I think that's all I need to do minimally there. All right, so radio, we're going to set it for an ICOM. He said 751 or 741. I don't have 741, but 751 is the same command set, so we'll use that. Um, that is the USB port that I think that it creates. Yep, this is Linux. Um, with Windows, you'd probably have to install a serial driver, and then it would be one of the COM ports. I'm not sure about Mac. But under Linux, it just creates a uh, dev TTY USB 0 port, and we set the baud rate to 19.2, and I'll hit test cat. Oh, audio. It wants us to do the audio, of course. Uh, let's see, input C media, that's the little audio interface I'm using. And uh, output C media, okay. Let's go back here to radio and test cat. It turned green, so we're talking to it. That's good. That's all we've got to do, just that simple. And I'm gonna come up here in mode. I'm gonna select whisper. And we can't quite see the waterfall here. I've got uh, I've got the video set to a lower resolution so you can see it. <laughs> Out here is where the whisper signals are, 1400, 1600, centered around 1500, and you can see them. You can see the signals up in there. So what we would want to do is we would uh, be set to monitor whisper and we would probably want to enable band hopping. And when you do that, there's this schedule button here. We click that and that brings up the schedule. So you can set up different bands over different periods of time. The sunrise day, gray line, daytime, sunset gray line, night. Um, tune would be, if you were using an antenna, tuner and you were going to be transmitting, you'd enable it to do a tune every time it changes bands, uh, where it would put out a, a low power carrier to let your antenna tuner do its thing. But we're not doing that. We're doing receive only. And you can see these are categories by band up here. So I'm, I'm going to say a 160, 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, and 12, and 10. And uh, we'll do them all. Well, let's see. Sunrise gray line. I probably want to do maybe up to 17. 15 is not going to be open yet. Daytime. I'm not going to worry about 160 or 80 meters. I'm going to do 40 through 10. I think that highlight square picks the next band that it's going to go to when I would close this dialog. Uh, sunset gray line will bring back 160 and we'll, yeah, you know what, we'll do it all the way through 10 meters to the gray line because some days it might be open. Oops. Missed the checkbox. There we go. But nighttime, we're only going to do 160, 80, and 40, maybe 30, and maybe 20. There we go. So that's how you would set up the schedule. And then what it's going to do is it's going to um, monitor whisper on whatever the current band is, and then it's going to go to the next band, and it's just going to cycle through those bands, adjusting the receiver every time. So we'll let it run here for a moment and see how it decodes. I've got it hooked up to an end-fed half wave that is cut for 40 meters and works on 40, 20, 15, and 10. But it'll receive the other bands, of course. But that's the antenna that I'm using presently. It's just about 20 feet off the ground. It's just a little end-fed half wave. It's not really uh, optimally set up or anything. So we'll see how far we receive. And we're almost done with this decode cycle down here. It's decoding. Still decoding. I've got it set to deep, so it's working hard. There we go. Quite a few stations on the first pass. Um, if you were using this on a, a weaker computer, an older laptop or something where it just doesn't have a lot of processing power, under this decode menu, you've got deep, normal, and fast. 
Deep uses a lot more processing power. That's really only for powerful machines. Um, it's going to take a lot longer. Normal is pretty quick, and probably on most machines, that's going to be fine. It's going to decode within probably 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, it is multi-threaded now, so while it's doing the decode, it's still receiving um, the, next, uh, the next group. So if, even if it is taking a while on deep, you probably you might still be able to use that. Uh, if you're on really old hardware or like a little ra an older Raspberry Pi, you might want to select fast because that's it might take too long on normal. What you'd have to do is you'd have to watch this decode button and see how long it's going to take, you know. And if it doesn't finish decoding by the time it's done with the next receive cycle, then you need to drop this down to a uh, lower tier until, you know, you have the, the time for the cycle to complete. <laughs> so I'm going to let this run for a little while, and then we'll go to the Whisper map and we'll see um, how well it's receiving. So here is the footprint on 20 meters uh, that the Zactec picked up. And you can see it, uh, it did pretty well. We've got stations all across the U.S. and up into Canada. Now, for comparison, I used the 10-minute sliding window on the WhisperNet site. And I uh, about 10 minutes later, I started the ICOM 705. And this is the map from the uh, ICOM 705. And as you can see, it's receiving about the same footprint. So the little Whisper receiver from Zactec is at least as sensitive as my ICOM 705. It works quite well. Here's a picture of the board. You can see it's all analog circuitry over there on the right. This is an analog receiver, purpose-built specifically for Whisper. It has a, a USB decoder or demodulator and a bandpass filter that is 400 hertz wide and centered on 1.5 kilohertz. So you could not use this as a regular receiver. Somebody wants to know what it sounds like, so I recorded WWV through it. Here's the audio clip. So as you can see, you can just barely hear the clicking of the uh, WWV signal. It's, it's not useful as a regular audio receiver, but it's not built to be. It's built to be a whisper receiver. So as you can see, it's real easy to set up. It works right off the get-go. You just need the little... Uh, you either need a microphone input on your computer that you're using or a little $6, $7 audio interface. No big deal. Um, so yeah, setting it up under uh, under on the computer was pretty straightforward. What about using a Raspberry Pi? Well, it's the same thing. Uh, I went in on this Pi and I set it up WSJTX exactly as I just showed you, uh, set to band hop and decode whisper, and then I set up WSJTX to auto start when this Pi boots up. So all I need to do is hook these up and hook it up to an antenna and plug this into five, uh, five volts, the USB power source, and it's off and running. It connects to my wireless network. Whisper or WSJTX starts, and it starts reporting um, to the network. So, just these two little things sitting off in a corner somewhere, drawing about five, six hundred milliamps of power off of a little power supply or a solar setup, uh, would sit there and report Whisper all day long uh, and all night long. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a really cool little thing. I'm glad I got a chance to take a look at this and show it to you. The uh, website. Web page is not up for it yet at the publishing of this video. It's just a 404. But I will put the link in the description because Harry has told me that within a week or two he's going to have some data up on that site. So if you're watching this video down the road from when it was published, you can go to that link in the description to get to the product page uh, for this little Whisper receiver and uh, order one if you'd like. Uh, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Zactec all band, or all, HF all band whisper uh, receiver. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.